Hey everybody, how's it going? It's me, your guy Post Malone. Yes, that Post Malone, don't ask. Welcome back to the Minecraft Guide, episode number three, two. Hope you're doing well today, elites. So, today is going to be a really, really big day. This is probably, well, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, this is definitely the biggest project that we've done in a single episode. We're back over at the custom villager village that we're working on. Pam, your job has been served. Thank you very much for helping me. You're gonna have to move today. So, in today's episode, the plan is to hopefully get this entire town built, well, kind of. So, if you missed the last episode, you should definitely go and catch that one first. Things will make a whole lot more sense. I'll go ahead and leave a card on screen right now. Basically, we're building a custom village for villagers. Now, there's a lot going on over here. This over here is the key. Each wool color represents something different. Today, our focus is the yellow. We need to get all of the buildings in. And actually, the orange too. The orange is more buildings. I just ran out of yellow, so I used a different color there. Right, at the end of the last episode, we talked about the block palette. Now, the palette is very, very important. We're trying to build a desert village, so we need to make things look deserty. Now, this desert village should definitely look different than the vanilla villages. If it didn't, well, then this would all be kind of pointless. So, these are the blocks that we'll be using. We'll be using spruce wood, oak, uh, lots of sandstone, and not just this type of sandstone, smooth sandstone as well, and then terracotta. Now, we can use pretty much any terracotta color that we'd like. Now, before the episode, I got all of this terracotta from the Mesa, and I went ahead and healed up our tools as well. I also went around and collected all of the oak logs that I had, uh, the sandstone, pretty much all of it, and the spruce wood as well. In today's episode, we'll have to do a lot of back and forth work. I definitely will need more wood to build this whole town. I mean, we're building a whole town. I have 34 oak logs, so we'll have to farm trees over here, and then spruce trees, those will be farmed over there. The spruce trees are a whole lot easier to farm, though. So, uh, that's that. And now, the town project. Where do we start? Mm, I think let's start with this one. I know exactly what kind of building I'd like to put right here. This building will be for our farmer. So building an entire town in Minecraft is clearly a big job. There, there's a lot to it, and it can be kind of tricky. That's why you should definitely plan things out first, which is what we did in the last episode. So building number one should sit somewhere in here. The green represents paths, so we'll have a path coming down into the town and then going right around this area here. Where the path exactly ends up, well, that part's not too important. So, this first building, I think, should be outlined with oak logs and then have smooth sandstone as the main wall block. I think that would look really good, and the logs would fit pretty nicely with its farming purpose. So, let's see. If we were to do something like this, what, what would we have? We'd have a decently long building? I, I think that actually might be good. Now, the buildings that we're building in today's episode are for Minecraft villagers. So, that means we sort of have an easy way out. Minecraft villagers don't require a whole lot of space. I mean, they need a bed and a workstation. That's just about it. So, the buildings don't really need to be all that big at all. We just need to make sure they look good. So, I'm thinking that this building will maybe be... Let's see, how deep do we need it to be? Uh, could we do three? I honestly think we could do three, because then we'd have room for our garden behind the building. So let's go ahead and make the building this deep. So that means the wall goes one more block out, and this building will kind of blend into the hill. Maybe we'll move the hill, I'm not too sure. So this one will go something like that, and then we'll basically complete the rectangle. So that means we end up with something that looks just like this right here. That is probably a really good start. Now, today we need to get the buildings in. The details, those can actually come a little later on, like in the next episode. We will maybe do some of the building details today, but for the most part, we need to really just get the structures in. Getting the structures in is going to be a really, really big job after all. And honestly, now that I think about it, adding the details is going to be a really big job too, so it might make things a little bit easier to split them up into separate projects. Now, the main plank type that we'll be using in today's town is probably going to be spruce planks. I think the spruce planks will blend really, really nicely and also stand out from the sandstone that we'll be using all over this build. So, let's say spruce planks on the roof, that's probably good, and then a spruce door. Down below the door, we'll do that though. So this door, if we put it like that, um, we have a little bit of depth there, which actually might be pretty nice. Let's go ahead and go with the depth just like that. 
So that's good so far, but I feel like it needs a little bit more details. The details could maybe be achieved with some wool. What if we came in here and added some sort of covering, like a, like a, I guess it would be like an awning going right over the door. That might actually look really cool. So let's say awning with the carpet, just like that, and the fences go straight down to support this thing. Connecting from these fences to the wall uh, goes fence gates. So what do we think about something like that? Hmm, I think that might actually work perfectly. It's kind of hard to tell with this wool in here right now. The path will be sunken down into the ground, but yeah, I, I think that'll look good. Now over here, next to this build, I'd like to build something that I forget the name of yet again. The thing is with fences. So let's say maybe a three by three area like that, and then the fences go up, I think four blocks, and then we can go ahead and spam fences all over the roof of this thing. This is exactly what we did on the sugarcane farm over there, but uh, yeah, the name, mm, you guys are gonna have to help me out there. Don't remember what it's called, but I think it'll look good. Then, right in the middle of this thing on the ground, we'll put a composter. We'll probably put another composter inside of this building as well. We can have more than one farmer in the town, because farmers are very useful. We have lots of farms, farms produce crops, and we can take those crops and sell them to the farmers for profit. We are trying to use this village as a trading hall after all, so I think that, I, I think I like the sounds of all that stuff that I just said. Beautiful. So, for build number one, this is what we have. We have building and little thing over there made out of fences. Now, I think that's going to be it for the first build. Obviously, we'll have to come back and add the details, but uh, as a structure, that is pretty solid. Now let's go ahead and tackle this building right here. Now this time, I definitely think it would be cool to use some terracotta. So let's try and do maybe terracotta coming up right from the ground on the corners and then maybe lots of sandstone in the middle. Now, how much smooth sandstone? Well, good question. Uh, I think the inside of this build should be raised up. So we'll have the door sitting on a block like this and then two blocks of space another block block over the door just like that so i guess the terracotta goes up this high now this might be cool to turn into a tower so let's try and make this one a tower actually uh just two stories so not too tall but a little tall i think these blocks should work together i need more smooth sandstone but i think that should work that could be actually pretty cool now the first big standout town building tip that I can give you guys in today's episode is to go one building at a time. Take things slow. Now it may seem that today's project is kind of going quickly, but it, it really isn't. I am taking things slow and thinking a lot in between cuts. Go one building at a time for sure. Now. You may be thinking, you know, obviously I'll, I'll go one building at a time, but really, seriously, try and finish one building completely before moving on to the next one. If you don't, you'll end up with a bunch of buildings that are like half built, and then your town's not going to look very good. You'll get uninspired, you'll get frustrated, and then you'll end up tearing things down when you don't really even need to tear anything down at all. Now, sure, I did skip the details. Usually I would recommend doing the details first, but... I, I can break my own rules here. <laughs> this is my channel. I, I will break my rules when I need to. So, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Usually you should finish one build all the way. So, there we go. Floor one. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing again. The floor on the inside will sit where the orange is. So, we don't see it from the outside. So, this one will go up to here just like that. The tower will continue straight up again. And then... We'll do the same loop right around the top, and that should probably be good. I, I think it will be. So obviously, the vibe of this one is completely different than that building over there. The wood and the orange are quite different in tone. With that being said, I think that means we need to do something to the outside of this building down the ground to make it blend in a little bit more. That thing actually isn't, it's not actually on the ground, I misspoke. I think if we come in with spruce buttons on these flat parts of the orange and just kind of place them everywhere, things will start to blend in a little bit more. Now, obviously, the building's still going to look pretty different, but now we have the brown tone brought across the road into that building, which I think is perfect. That is the tie-in that we needed. So I'll have to come back in with a couple more buttons, and we're actually going to do that right now just to see how it turns out, but something like that would probably be good. But I feel like we could get a little more brown in this build by 
maybe adding a small porch so let's say this is the front of the build that'll this will be where we put the front door we could do spruce on the ground right there and then maybe some staircases or slabs actually yeah slabs all the way around to really bring the same colors right across the road all of the builds don't need to use exactly the same colors but you should have a pretty consistent palette which is the next big tip here if you don't have a pretty solid build palette, or if you can't stick to your build palette for some reason, your town will end up looking pretty random. You really want to try and make sure your builds actually match each other. Matching is very, very important on a town build like this one. Now, obviously, we could get spawns on top of this build, which is going to be a problem, but it's a problem that we will deal with a little later on before we get villagers inside of this town. Obviously, we're going to need to block spawns across this whole town. If one zombie spawns inside of this village and turns a villager into a zombie villager, then the town is pretty much gone. Big problem. So... We'll need to make sure things are safe. Now, what do we think about this build right here? Do we like it? Mm, yeah, I think we like it enough to leave it for now. And if it's a problem, we'll come back a little later. Now, who will work there? No clue. We'll figure that part out a little later. But building number two, check. Now, I know that this building is going to be a big one, and it's going to be, I think, two stories. So we'll come back to that one. And instead, we'll work over here on this building. Now, uh, what should we do with this one? So we have a rectangle, we have a circle. Maybe we will actually keep this build as a square. We'll keep this one nice and simple. So front door going towards the center marketplace area. I like that idea. So right here will be the door. This build will be placed right on the ground at this time. Yeah, let's place this one right on the ground. For this one, let's try something a little bit different. Instead of using wood or terracotta to outline this build, let's try using different types of sandstone. I think that could look pretty nice. So on the corners of this build, we'll do sandstone just like that. Then maybe we could actually add an angle to this build by doing a slab roof. So let's say we have slabs like that. We could go up maybe one or two blocks and then have a flat roof still. But doing something like this will bring the brown from that build and that build over into this one. And I think that'll look nice. And you know what? Just because why not? Let's go ahead and change this build up already. On this side, the side that was originally going to be the front, let's make this actually the side. So the front door will go over here facing towards the farm in this area. On this side, we'll do some sort of market stall. So villagers could like stand here and sell things if they were going to actually do things like that. They won't, obviously, but they could. And I think that'll look really cool. It'll add a nice feel to the marketplace that we have in here eventually. All right, so this build now looks like this. I am really happy with how this one turned out. So I switched things up. I ditched the slab roof because it looked really, really flat and opted for a little bit of staircases and then slabs on top. Now we have the door over here and then we have the trading stall right over here. Villagers won't be able to jump out of that, so that's good. By the way, later we'll come back in with probably glass panes or something and fill all of the windows, of course. But anyways, there's this build right there. I think that looks really good. Now the next build, I, I think I'd like to tackle this one because, I mean, it's going to be the biggest house in this whole area, I think, and I have a really cool idea. The only question is, can we actually achieve it? Now, in between cuts, I also went over to a mountain and dug a bunch of sandstone out. I think we might actually want some of this raw sandstone for this build, but uh, again, I'm not too sure. I guess we'll we'll kind of we'll see once we get it in. So let's go ahead and start by removing some of this wool right here. Now, this build is going to be very depth heavy. Now, we have been incorporating depth into all of the builds in this town so far, of course, uh, but we really haven't been talking about it too much. And that's because, well, up until this point, the depth has just kind of been happening wherever it happens. This one's a circle, so there's lots of depth in the turns. That one has that whole pop-out. This one is the roof. But this time, I'd like to get really, really fancy. I think we could do sandstone sort of dividers, if you will, so then this would come back down and we do another staircase here to create an arch and then on the inside we could do spruce planks the only question here is how tall does the build need to be is that too tall mm, no i think that's good i i think that's that should maybe be fine 
Maybe? <laughs> I'm not too sure. I, I think we can kind of go with it. So let's go ahead and have that come over to here and go straight down. And then in here needs to be a staircase and a staircase. Now, if we stick with this, we'll put a door right down in here. So this all gets filled in with spruce wood again. So now we have something that looks like that. I think that looks really good. Now over here on this side of the build, I'd like to actually do a staircase going up. So that means we'll have another wall going up right there, but then we'll have a staircase in the middle. Now this staircase will go all the way up to the second story, but this is where I'm starting to think maybe we need to shorten that because this staircase will get really long. So let's go ahead and shrink this all down by one. So with everything readjusted, we now have that. That definitely looks a whole lot better. Then over here, we have the staircase going up. I think that'll look good. We'll have a path out here that'll connect up to that staircase. Now in these flat areas, I think we could do probably oak logs sticking out. But the question is, do they go there or do they go one block higher? Hmm, I think they go right there where I'm putting them. Um, Maybe they go one block higher. Now up here to cap things off, we'll do smooth sandstone slabs so the logs actually stick out of the blocks. That looks really good. Now there is one more layer to this build that we need to get in. The layer is up there of course. Now you'll have to excuse me a little bit because we don't have the top area done at all, but imagine a floor in here with something. Maybe it's spruce, maybe it's sandstone, I, I don't really know. So we have a floor in there. Now over here, I think I'd like to add another layer to this build, but this floor will only be accessible through this staircase over here. So the ground floor is disconnected entirely from the top part of the build. That means that this top part of the build could be its own building entirely. Now, how do we line it up? That is the big question. Do we do these going up like that right there? And have it like offset from those? Or does that move? Maybe this should, it should definitely stay in line with these, uh, definitely. Okay, so this all moves back one block that way. Now to differentiate the top from the bottom part of the build, we'll use normal sandstone up here. But what do we think? Will it look good? Hmm, I think that'll look really, really good. Now over here, I did sink the lime wool down into the ground where the path will actually be, but I didn't do that over here. I think we'll get a better picture of this build if we could just move all of this lime. So let's see, what do we have now? Um... Definitely good, but the bottom part should be taller again. So this time, easy. We can extend this downwards, not a problem at all. And the staircase can stick out a little bit. I don't think that'll be a problem at all either because we can do that there and that there just like that. And that adds even more depth to the build. So I think this one is great. Uh, just like that. Mm-hmm, just like that. That one's perfect. Time to go ahead and get this build in. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I think I like it quite a bit. Now, on this one, I used a little less buttons than I used on that one, and honestly, I kind of like that one a little bit more, so maybe we come back and pull some of the buttons off of that build, but I think this build turned out very, very nicely. I'm planning on maybe making this one just have a bunch of beds down here, and then up top, maybe we have like a dedicated profession area. I'm not too sure, but uh, I am actually really happy with that building. So that means it's time to work on the next one. But first, I should probably sleep. You are a problem, zombie. So I know that I'd like to use red terracotta on the next build because I think red terracotta looks so, so good in a desert theme. I think we'll do this circle build next, and then after doing this one, we're probably just going to go ahead and jump ahead a little bit, and I'll get a bunch of the buildings in because, well, I mean, technically, I think we're only like halfway done. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I have a lot more buildings to get in, basically. Now, this building, hmm, how do I want to do this one? Maybe we do definitely not a tower again. I don't want to copy that. Maybe maybe on this one we do the red on the flat sides. So like lots of red actually. We could do whole red walls like this. That could look really cool. Then in these uh, these corners we could do sandstone. That could go up and then maybe I could try and put a dome on this one. A domed roof would look actually pretty sweet so maybe uh yeah that's gonna actually be the plan for this one we'll do a red circular building with a domed roof and this side will be the entrance we'll enter right into this market area that'll look really cool 
Now another big part of making these town builds look good is using different shapes. So if you couldn't tell already by this point in the video, I'm trying to do different shapes on each building. I'm not doing all circles or all squares or all rectangles. If you do something like that, your village will look maybe good, but it'll look also really, really vanilla and, and basic, honestly. Now, basic isn't always bad. Basic could look good, but if you're trying to get a really cool custom-looking town in, try using different shapes. Now, for example, this build over here, I think I'm going to try something very, very different, but first, we need to finish this one. Uh, the dome idea, I think that is going to work really, really well, but this side will be kind of odd, so... Maybe do we shorten it? No, 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 no. It'll be good like that. It'll be fine. All right, so domed build is now officially complete. Boom, there we go. We'll just need to get a door on it, but I think that looks pretty cool, and it is definitely, definitely different. The only thing that I'm wondering about is this wall right here. Should that continue upwards? Obviously, I, I can see it. We have a giant A. Um... Yeah, I think it needs to stay like that for this to look good. Hmm, I think it'll be good. It'll, it'll look good. It maybe just looks a little weird because there's nothing around it right now. So, now I need to get this building in. I'm going to go ahead and try and make this building an L-shaped building. Well, unfortunately, an L-shaped building did not fit in here because the space is too cramped and I didn't really want to push the wall out, so I did this interesting shape instead. It's basically a square or a rectangle with another box popping out of it. Inside of here, we have something that looks like this. I think it's pretty cool looking. I actually really like this sandstone paired with smooth sandstone as well, so I went ahead and actually used it on a build over here as well. When going into this project, I knew all along that I wanted to have three small buildings next to each other, and that's what this corner is over here. Now, I still do need doors on these builds, and I need fence posts over here on this awning area, but I think this is pretty nice, and we almost have a small courtyard over here, so maybe I'll put something fancy there. Now, initially, back here, I planned on doing more crop gardens, so maybe we'll do that. I'm not too sure. I definitely would like to have plenty of food in the village, so yeah, maybe crops back there. That would be a, probably a pretty good spot for them. So, now we have this. This is looking really good. We are actually almost all the way done with this town. We have three more buildings to put in. One over here, one there, and then one over here. This building, for sure, will be the L-shaped building. We'll do the L going down this way and then going over this way, so the missing corner is towards the market area. Over here, probably a big, strong square building, and then back there, I'm not too sure. Maybe another tower. A tower could look pretty nice. Maybe a tower very similar to that one. Then, finally, back here, and we'll come back before I do this one, but back here will be buildings that are sort of coming out of the side of this cliff. But, that is just about it for everything. Uh, oh yeah, by the way, I'm gonna try and work granite into this L-shaped build over here, so we'll see how that works out, but... Yeah, three more buildings are about to come in now before our final jump back in. So, wish me luck, and it's time for me to go ahead and get right back to work. Well, this isn't the village. Mm hmm that is right. This is the sandstone deposit that we've been using for quite some time. I am out of sandstone again, unfortunately, but fortunately, this pickaxe plows right through this stuff, like not even a problem, and oh no, <laughs> that's a problem. That's the end of the sandstone thing. Hmm, we'll have to find a new area to get sandstone next time we need more of this stuff. Ah, uh, that's kind of a problem. Anyways, the town is coming in quite nicely in my opinion. I have just about every single building finished and we're about ready to work on the buildings that go at the back of this town. But first, this is what I have now. So this building, this one looks really, really different, but I think it turned out pretty nicely. I think that this will be the smeltery building. Not that we'll actually put lava in this town, we can't trust them, but maybe we'll do like campfires or something and have smoke coming out of this build because that would look really cool. So the granite is incorporated and I think it looks pretty nice here. I think it adds a lot to the town actually because the town is kind of samey looking intentionally and the granite is nice. So over here, I have a building that I'm currently working on. I need to throw a roof on it and then over here, 
here we have a tower now this tower is pretty much copied over from that one but i added an awning on this lower area to make things look a little bit different i didn't really want to copy the same exact build identically i felt weird about that so uh i decided to switch it up a little bit i did put the buttons on the top in a on in a different way too so don't know i'm trying to decide which one i like more honestly i think i like this one more the buttons are more consistent but not too sure and still all of these builds do need glass panes we might put those in today maybe in the detailing part i'm not too sure but this back area so i have the path kind of marked out perfectly this is exactly where it's going to be but we need to build a lot of buildings back here so i need to smelt up more sandstone but i'm thinking that the buildings will honestly have a little bit more color uh red orange and yellow still but the builds themselves will actually be pretty similar to this one minus all of the depth and all of the cool detail so on this build we have a staircase going up to a higher level and that's exactly what i'm thinking for these back buildings now due to the, how much height we have the buildings will probably only have two height layers maybe three but but probably two so uh, I'll have a lot of buildings back here and they'll all be connected, but they'll be separate, almost like an apartment or a townhouse or something like that. So that's actually just about it, aside from a lot of details that we'll probably end up knocking out in the next episode or two. Things like buttons, glass panes, and of course, all of the furnishings like composters and workstations and all these marketplaces. But uh, yeah, that's another job for another time. Anyways, time to go back to smelting and building. I think I am going to go ahead though and finally move all of this stuff, at least the first furnaces over towards the middle of the town uh, because it's kind of annoying running all the way back over here every time I need to smelt something up the bed will go in the middle as well oh and a patrol came through but the patrol uh they it's gone now <laughs> we'll put it that way wow this has been a huge huge project elites but the town is now finally just about done or at least the shell of the town when i say shell i mean the structures all of the structures are now finally in here it is so uh, we'll do a quick little tour here at the end of the video. So we have the farm building, farm building number two, I guess. Another building there, another building there, uh, another building that you guys have definitely seen right over there. Then we have this one. This one is now finished. It's new. We have an open lower area. I'm not too sure what'll go in here. And then we actually have a staircase up to the roof of this build where I plan on putting another workstation and making a small villager setup up here as well. I think that'll be cool and it'll overlook this whole center marketplace area that i keep calling it now going down this road we have this tower building over here we'll have to work on the insides of all of these buildings in the next episode then we have this area back here which is completely new now i am really happy with how this area turned out basically we have stacked buildings all over the place in this back corner and i think that really makes this back corner feel like crazy built up in between the buildings will probably do walls and then these buildings will actually act as a wall as well so whoever lives in this building gets a view to the outside world but the villagers will never leave <laughs> uh yeah they're trapped there forever so anyways building building there's another building right in here this one is an interesting shape then we have another building right here same shape but flipped or reversed then another staircase up here to a large building where i'm thinking about adding a back door now the back door will be controlled by buttons and it'll be an iron door so basically this back door will only be for us so we can sneak into the town if we need to another building over here and then down here another building again pretty predictable now the path curves back over towards the market and then over here we're thinking farms lots of farms going there now this is that big fancy building that we built i really really like this one that one might be my favorite or honestly this one too i really do like how that one turned out but then finally we have these three small buildings in here now i did go ahead and put plain glass panes on all of these buildings because well i i couldn't come up with a color that would fit really really well in here i did think black stained glass but that's kind of dark and and i don't know if the villagers would like that then i was thinking about a color but we actually have a lot of color in the town already so i skipped the color and went for plain glass now the doors uh, alternate between spruce doors and oak doors because i figured spruce doors on spruce wood wouldn't look the best so yeah that's how i came up with that that's what i did there now the detailing i did start some of the detailing on some of these builds like the buttons and such but the detailing is definitely nowhere near done 
Detailing is a huge part of doing these towns. If you skip the detailing, your town will look empty. It'll look lame. It'll look unfinished. So we're going to go ahead and actually save all of the detailing for the next episode because would you look at the time it's just about time to end the episode hey go pam uh, there you, go. you can have that <laughs> but i hope you guys enjoyed this episode what do you think about the town so far definitely share your thoughts your opinions in the comments below i'd love to hear them and if you like the video drop a like and subscribe if you haven't yet all of my links are right down in the description the merch is right down below the video as well today i'd like to send a big big thank you a big shout out to my patrons brown banana 13 thank you very much for the support and i will see you all in the next one until next time stay cool elites adios